Happy New Year, ladies and gents. Hope you're all having a lovely week so far. That's right, we're back. It's a new year, and that means the start of season five of Degreelessness. <laughs> Jeez, I can't believe I've been doing this for five years already. I can't believe I've been allowed to do this for five years. That's insane. When I first made this channel, it was just to kind of rant a little bit and get shit off my chest. I never imagined I'd still be doing it after this long to say nothing of having actual subscribers, especially thousands of them. I know technically that's barely any, but I never thought I'd even have 50, so <laughs> it's a lot to me. Just want to take a quick second to say thank you to everyone who watches and supports the channel. Love you guys. Moving on though, it may be less than a week into the new year, but we do already have some things to get deep inside of, so let's do it. And let's start with a quick recap of the week where we'll begin with everyone's favorite poison spewing, human rights abusing CEO, Big Cock Bobby K. He's out. Yup, finally, at long last, sanity has prevailed and as of December 29th, 2023, in that foul year of our Lord, Bobby Kotick is officially no longer the CEO of Activision Blizzard and there was much rejoicing. Now, do I think that this is going to have any noticeable effect on the quality of Activision Blizzard games going forward? No, <laughs> of course not. But if things stand a chance of improving, even a little bit, getting this guy out is definitely the first step. Plus, I just like seeing bad things happen to bad people. If you're watching this channel, I trust I don't need to go over all the ways that rapacious, overpaid, parasitic corpo leadership criminals contribute to the destruction of not only the industries they operate in, but also the lives of their employees and the working class in general. They own this fucking place. It's a big club, and you ain't in it. But for anyone who might be new here, and also just because I love flexing when I know I'm right, let's check out a few choice comments from some of the unfortunate people who were directly affected by Big Cock Bobby's policy of unrestrained greed and reckless indifference. First, we'll take a look at just how much money filthy greed mongers like Bobby typically extract from the working class in the form of compensation packages. This next quote comes from a surprisingly informative piece in Esquire entitled, The Dark Truth of the Best Year in Video Game History. Sidebar, best year in terms of corporal profits maybe, but certainly little else. During the first year of the pandemic, Activision Blizzard CEO Bobby Kotick was paid $155 million, and EA CEO Andrew Wilson was paid $21.4 million in compensation packages, according to SEC filings. Meanwhile, ZipRecruiter estimates the average annual income for U.S. game workers is just $38,600 a year. Whew, Jesus Christ. Of course, we all already know that no one actually works hard enough to deserve that much fucking money, but holy shit. It never ceases to disgust me every time I'm reminded of just how stark the difference is between the regular working class employees that actually create the value for the company and the leeches all the way up at the very top that take all the profit made from it. It's just nauseating. Anyway, here's another way to look at it, courtesy of Alana Smith on Twitter. Measuring CEO salaries by how many game developers you could pay a living wage to instead really makes those we had to do layoffs announcements boil one's blood. You could pay 2,000 plus devs 75,000 a year for the price of one Bobby Big Cock Kodak while still paying him a million fucking dollars. Yeah, hands up if you think Bobby fucking Kodak, or any CEO really, did or is doing an amount or quality of work that's worth more than 2,000 times that of a regular employee. Yeah, absolutely not. Fuck out of here with that. You wonder why so many industries are so creatively bankrupt right now and their wages are on the fucking toilet? Well, this is a huge part of the reason why. <laughs> Here's another good one from someone named Christina, courtesy of Twitter, just in case you thought maybe game dev would be a fun and lucrative career path. I worked on COD for two years as a programmer at Demonware. Bobby's decisions made our games worse. In my first month, he threatened to have someone killed. <laughs> like, now, in seriousness, do I think that's likely to be true? I don't know, but probably not. The guy's a lecherous scumbag, but I'm not quite sure I'm ready to believe he was actually out there calling for people to be murdered too. But then again, if this were somehow proven to be true, I wouldn't exactly be very surprised. So y'all make up your own mind. Big Cock Bobby, guilty of murdering people or just games? <laughs> Good riddance, you fuck. Our main story tonight and first of the new year comes directly from the rumor engine and concerns Nintendo's inevitable follow-up to their insanely successful Switch console. <laughs> now, now, stop groaning. 
I think this is actual real news that we've got here this time. And given that the Switch was my console of the year and generation, incidentally, I'm not gonna even attempt to hide my bias. I want this motherfucker, it's a day one purchase for me. An emulation machine that I can play in bed that also runs Zelda, Mario, and Metroid games, but this time capable of running most major AAA titles too? I mean, shit, what kind of nut job doesn't like the sound of that? And hey, if you're rolling your eyes now, I get it. Switch 2 news has been one of the bigger rumor cock teases these past few months, and normally I try to ignore most of them when they come out, but this time, considering that more than a few outlets have covered these new stories and more and more they're lining up with a lot of previous leaks, I think now is one of those times that it would be okay to report on them and just see what the fuck is going on in Nintendo World these days. First up, let's get the boring stuff out of the way. According to quite a few outlets, as well as my Nintendo news, a Bayonetta trilogy is well, practically confirmed as one of the launch titles for the Switch 2. It will include upgraded graphics as well as HDR support, in addition to supporting backwards compatibility. Now, I like Bayonetta as much as the next dude, but a remaster collection of already released games doesn't exactly set my world on fire. Though I do think it's a good sign that one, it's mentioning backwards compatibility already, and two, HDR. My take on the chances that this is true, 95 to 100 easy, this is pretty much a lock. Next, let's talk reveal timelines. When are we gonna see this bitch? Long speculated, but only recently seeing some rumors of confirmation from outlets like Game Rant and among others, it's starting to look almost certain that we're gonna be seeing Nintendo pull the cover off their Switch successor by the end of March at the very latest. As I mentioned earlier, this is largely in line with the leaks we've been seeing for the past few months and just recently being confirmed by a few more trustworthy outlets with decent rumor track records, so I think it's a pretty safe bet. And if their goal is indeed to have this out by the end of the year, or holiday 2024 more specifically, which they'd be insane not to, they literally cannot push a reveal much past March. Even the end of March is a little late in my opinion. Um, likelihood, I'd say 100% or close to it. This is another lock. If they want to drop the new Switch by the end of the year, which they most certainly do, they have to show it off before the end of March. And that naturally brings us to release timeframe and price. In reporting from Video Game Chronicle and IGN, both quoting Dr. Serkin Toto, CEO of a Tokyo-based game industry consultancy, they say Nintendo's Switch successor will absolutely launch this year and will likely adopt the two models pricing of Sony and Xbox's consoles. Hooray. Rumor is that the digital version will retail for around $399, with the cartridge version coming in at slightly more at $450. Kind of shitty because we all know that this type of scheme is really there just to milk the people that still want to own physical media, which is perfectly fucking reasonable. If you ask me, I might even say it's kind of recommended after all there's no shortage of stories out there of game companies yanking games customers have paid for off servers and making them inaccessible even to the people who've already bought them. And those physical games are definitely going to be running us $70 in the future. You can guarantee that. Everyone else is doing it. Tears of the Kingdom confirmed Nintendo has no intention of missing out on that action. Now, regardless of which model you want and how you purchase your games, though, you will be waiting until just about the end of the year to do it. According to numerous sources, Nintendo has two potential launch dates in mind, either the end of September or mid to early November 2024. September if they can get their act together fast enough, November if they fuck things up. So knowing Nintendo, I put my money on November. Overall, how likely do I think these date ranges and pricing are? Easily 80%, you know, like I think 300 would be too cheap and there's no way Nintendo's gonna try to sell anything for much past 400. Moving on, let's talk a little bit about specs. Some people are saying it'll be about as powerful as a base PS4. Now, while I think technically this would probably be good enough as that would make it capable of running everything from the newest Call of Duty to Final Fantasy XV, it would, however, be psychotic for Nintendo to lowball it with tech that's already that obsolete. I mean, we did see them do it already once before with the Switch and that seemed to go really well, so I wouldn't put anything past them, but still, PS4, even that sounds a little a little archaic even for Nintendo. A more realistic appraisal in my opinion is the newer rumored specs being tossed around, which put the Switch 2 supporting both ray tracing and DLSS 3.1, as well as being packed with 12 gigabytes of RAM. Apparently this is the hardware configuration that the rumored Matrix tech demo, high res version of Breath of the Wild and FF7 remake demos that were being shown last year were running on. And that sounds about right to me. You all know my opinion of the FF7 remake, but I can't say that the idea of Final Fantasy returning to a Nintendo platform wouldn't warm my cold, ruined heart just a little bit. As far as the display is concerned, I think eight inches for it is a lock, but it's not going to be OLED and it's not going to be 120 hertz. You know, of course, it would be awesome if it were, but 
That would absolutely annihilate the battery life and Nintendo is just not gonna tolerate that. It's not their style. What is a little more their style though is the eight inch 1080p IPS panel at 60 Hertz, which will be fine for what they're trying to do, I think. My guess, it'll be a little better than a PS4 Pro, but not quite as capable as a Series S, which as we said before, is all Nintendo has to do really. You may have seen a few outlets, VGC among them, also stating that according to various industry consultants, the Switch 2 will likely be a quote, iteration of the current hardware design rather than a revolution. Now, that sounds pretty good, in my opinion. Firstly, because the last time Nintendo used the word revolution, we got grandma's waggle controls for 10 years. And secondly, because anything beyond a form factor improvement and a slight hardware bump, it's all they have to do. And knowing Nintendo, as we do, it's a pretty safe bet that if they try anything beyond that, they're gonna fuck it up. Overall likelihood of these specs are close to them, 85% or more. We're getting down to the wire here, guys, where most of the stuff we're gonna be hearing is largely gonna be true or pretty accurate. Lastly, I thought it would be fun to close with some completely baseless out-of-the-pocket predictions that I totally made up. Number one, launch titles. Mario Odyssey 2, baby, or at least the next 3D Mario game. That's a lock. It's been seven years since the last mainline 3D Mario game, and we only got one for the entire life cycle of the current Switch. In addition to that, they would be utterly mad to not do an enhanced Tears of the Kingdom slash Breath of the Wild release, especially given the demo that they showed off last year, supposedly behind closed doors. I also think, yep, it's time for Metroid Prime 4, motherfuckers. Considering not only how long it's been in development, it's gotta come out at some point, but also how well received last year's Prime Remaster was. Sidebar, if you haven't played that Prime Remaster and you like Metroid, you absolutely should. It's a phenomenal remaster of a fantastic game. I also think that there's a good chance we'll finally see the Twilight Princess and Wind Waker ports that we know they've been sitting on for a while now, as well as possibly the Dragon Quest III remake, depending on how early in the year the console itself actually drops. Now, I know, I like you, I don't wanna wait that long either for that, but let's be real, if it's not out by March, they'd be kinda of foolish to not just wait till the Switch 2 drops and announce it as a launch title. Really, the only thing that we don't have a lot more information about is the backwards compatibility features, but Again, coupled with the fact that we mentioned that it's going to be included in the Bayonetta trilogy, like, they'd have to be psychotic to overlook that, and I don't think even Nintendo is that fucking stupid. They're deranged, they're rampantly litigious, they can be cruel, and they're definitely utterly insane. But I don't think they're stupid. At least, I fucking hope not. Overall, I think just about everything we've gone over today is more or less exactly what we're going to see and how it's going to go down. If for no other reason than, I mean, come on guys, it all sounds exactly like what we've all come to expect from Nintendo, right? They don't push hardware boundaries, they rely on proven IPs and series, and they tend to push things just about as far as humanly possible before moving on. And I think that's what we're seeing here. The Switch 2, it's not gonna blow away any tech people. There's the Steam Deck and ROG Ally for that. But it will let us play most of the current gen AAA titles, plus Mario, Zelda, Metroid, and Pokemon games in bed. And in the end, pretty sure that's all it needs to do. Okay, that's our show. Thanks so much for chilling with us tonight. We love you today. We love you all the way. Happy New Year to everybody. And big thanks again to everyone who's stuck with me and supported the channel thus far. Really means a lot. Rest assured, we aren't going fucking anywhere, and we will be back next week to continue our unmitigated harassment and bullying campaign of this godforsaken industry that, for better or worse, mostly worse, we all can't help but love. Chuck, chuck, woke up, smoke up, blunt, and I pass out, pass, pass out, huh? Woke up, what up, smoke up, blunt, and I back down, back, back down, what? Yup, yup, woke up, smoke up, blunt, and I pass out, pass, pass out, huh? Woke up, what up, smoke up, blunt, and I'm...